Okay, so I wasn't going to upload today because this is my break day and I'm trying to relax, but Izuka just gave us some massive information about Sonic Frontiers from everything from game length to how many open worlds there's going to be and difficulty within Sonic Frontiers. We're gonna go over all of that today in today's video. So if you liked the video, make sure to like, comment, favorite, subscribe, and hit that bell for post notifications on so you get notified of my future Sonic content. Anyways. Let's get into the article. Now, before we get into the rest of the article, I just want to read this little bit here because I thought it was kind of funny. The next Sonic the Hedgehog game is getting unusually negative early buzz, demonstrating the hazards of even the most carefully coordinated marketing campaign. What? <laughs> Are you serious? There is nothing carefully coordinated about this marketing campaign. Let's just get that straight because you guys literally released two gameplay showcases showcasing your game that was in an early build. Why would you show an early build as your footage for a game you're trying to sell? I don't understand that. What do you mean carefully coordinated? That makes zero sense. But you know what? We can complain about the marketing all day. It doesn't matter. Hopefully the marketing gets better. But what really matters here is what this article tells us. So let's get right into it. So this is what Izuka has to say in response to everyone who is upset with what they have seen of Sonic Frontiers so far. I think a lot of people don't quite understand the new open zone gameplay that we're creating. Izuka was referring to Frontier's very visible detour from decades of traditional Sonic design that usually features the famous blue hedgehog running at blurring speeds through the linear obstacle filled levels. Frontiers has a more open format, yeah we already know this, it is an open zone game. But right here, Izuka tries to clarify what open zone means a lot more. He says it's not quite open world, as it initially appears in footage. It's not a go anywhere, do anything in one huge world kind of game, which he believes has thrown observers. Rather, Frontier's 60 person team is creating a series of 3D playgrounds on differently themed islands where Sonic can run, jump, and battle. The game will have linear stages too. Okay, so uh, there is a lot to talk about from that. Number one, Sonic Frontiers has multiple maps. It's not just one world, there's multiple islands with different settings. Which, I already knew this was going to be the case because a leak over a year ago has stated that there's four islands in Sonic Frontiers, and also because the website has mentioned that Sonic Frontiers has deserts, and we have yet to see any deserts, so I'm going to assume that one of the islands in Sonic Frontiers is a desert island. Which this has me really hyped because now we know that Sonic Frontiers isn't going to take place in one area with grass and trees and maybe some mountains. No, we're going to be visiting other places on other islands such as deserts. What I personally am hoping for is an island that is completely jungle themed or tropical themed. I really want to see something that is along the lines of Angel Island or White Jungle from Sonic Adventure 2. I always like those kind of settings in Sonic games, and I would love to see that in Sonic Frontiers. Like sure, a realistic desert, that's gonna look pretty on my monitor, but what I really want to see is that jungle. And even better, like what if they added a volcano in the middle of the jungle setting? I think that would be a really good set piece for Sonic Frontiers, and I think that would probably be the most memorable island in that game. I don't know, man. I'm just looking for like a modern day realistic take on Jungle Joyride. That's what I really want, but I don't know if we're ever going to get that. The thing is that we already know that Sonic Frontiers is going to have multiple islands, and we know what two of those islands are most likely to be. We have the one that we've already seen from teasers, and we're probably going to have a desert island. So like, what are the other islands? I don't know, what do you guys want to see from a Sonic Frontiers island? Tell me down below, I'm interested in that. But before we move on, we have to talk about the other things that were said here, such as Sonic Frontiers having a 60 person team creating the game. Now, I don't really know if a 60 person team is a good amount of developers working on one game, nor do I know how many developers worked on previous Sonic games. All I know is they're throwing out the label of 60 person team as if it's a big deal or something. I, I don't know if that's the case, I don't know if that's important or not, you guys have to tell me because I'm not really knowledgeable on how development teams work, but yeah, Sonic Frontiers has a 60 person team. 
Let's go. I, I don't know what that means, though. Now, the last thing I want to talk about here is when Azuka says that this game is quote-unquote not going to be a go-anywhere-do-anything-in-one-huge-world kind of game. Obviously, we do not know what this means yet, but I think I have a way of interpreting this. What I think he's saying here is that Sonic Frontiers isn't going to be open world in the sense of Rockstar's open world games or Breath of the Wild, games like that. I think it's going to be more based on collecting things and destroying enemies. Because if you guys remember what the IGN reviewer said, he talked about the gameplay loop of Sonic Frontiers and it basically said this. Explore open world, solve puzzles to open up map, find collectibles to improve stats, fight world bosses to earn portal gears, use portal gears to unlock linear levels, and complete linear Sonic levels to unlock Chaos Emeralds. That sounds like a really good gameplay loop, but that sounds nothing like Rockstar or Breath of the Wild. To me, what this sounds like is you're going to have less of a waypoint in Sonic Frontiers, and you're more of just going to be dropped in and expected to go explore and fight bosses so you can unlock linear Sonic levels. How I'm interpreting this is that Sonic Frontiers is not going to have a waypoint and a select path for you to follow. You're just going to be dropped into the world, and you're expected to beat the game your own way. And if I'm right about that, that sounds like a really good scenario for Sonic Frontiers, because that sounds like a lot of replayability. Jeez, I'm starting to sound like Todd Howard talking about Sonic Frontiers. We need to move on to the next thing. So right here, Izuka addresses some of the difficulty concerns with Sonic Frontiers, which, if you guys didn't know, a popular criticism of Sonic Frontiers is that the game looks too easy, and that the enemies just kind of stand there and lets you hit them. Well, this is what Izuka has to say about the difficulty. Izuka believes some fan confusion stems from the simplicity of what's been initially shown. This is just the first island, he said, of a demo running in LA. Maybe it's going to feel easy, but later on, you will need more technical skills to get to certain places. This kind of helps some of my worries that this game will be really easy, because in my opinion, I really like challenging games. I like it when games require you to master them to become good and get through the game more efficiently. That's what I hope Sonic Frontiers becomes, and I won't lie, I was a little bit skeptical after seeing the first island have enemies that were such pushovers, they looked really easy. But if Azuka is right here and the game does get a lot more challenging as the game progresses, then yeah, I'd say there's nothing to worry about here. But then again, the statement he gave us was a little too vague for my liking. Like, sure, he said this is just the first island and maybe it's going to feel easier, but then he says you will need more technical skills to get to certain places. Like, to me, if you want to say that the game gets more challenging over time, you would say something that maybe it's going to be easy for the first island, but later on, it's going to be a lot more challenging and test your skills as a player, but right here it just says you'll need more technical skills to get to certain places. That tells me that maybe the game won't get more challenging, and maybe it's actually just giving you more abilities to get through the game. Like, for an example, they could give Sonic a bounce bracelet to access some part of the map. Like, that's how I kind of interpret technical skills, but maybe I'm just reading into this too much. I just thought it was a little bit weird how he worded this. I'm probably just being overly paranoid when looking at this article, but you gotta understand, as a Sonic fan, I got trust issues. Okay guys, I am not making this up, I just got more information on the difficulty aspect of Sonic Frontiers from the game director himself, Morio Kishimoto, so let's read that real quick. In previous Sonic titles, we had to gradually make the stages more difficult in order to reach an amount of playtime that would satisfy players. It is natural for level-based platformers to become more difficult as you progress. However, for Sonic games, the problem has been that higher difficulty can get in the way of the game's sense of speed. In Sonic Frontiers, the open zone offers a lot of content already, so raising the difficulty in order to increase playtime was no longer necessary. From start to finish, we were able to maintain a sense of speed with ideal level design for a Sonic game. 
So I was not being overly paranoid for no reason. As we can see right here, Sonic Frontiers is going to be an easy game and probably won't be challenging in the slightest. That is all I got from this paragraph because apparently previous Sonic games only got more difficult as the game progressed so they can extend game time and this article kinda insinuates that Sonic Frontiers doesn't need to extend game time because it's already open zone with a lot of hours on the game. So, I don't think this game is going to be very challenging, so I was not being overly paranoid, and dang it, this game's gonna be really easy. Hopefully, after you beat the game, it unlocks a hard mode or something, because, man, man we about to have another pushover of a game. I'm tired of this, man. Alright, so the last thing I want to talk about in this video is the development challenges they've had with Sonic Frontiers. It says right here, a development challenge. Frontiers is, like any big game these days, a project racked by the you-know-what. Development started in Tokyo in late 2017, as Azuka and his team sought fresh ideas for the Sonic franchise after kind of hitting a wall with the old format. I kinda disagree with that, but we'll get back to that in a second. The you-know-what struck midway through development and sent the team into remote work mode. We've had a lot of problems in the beginning, he said. We've never done this before. Developers benefited from working safely, Azuka said. And the ease of digital communication even accelerated a lot of their work. The main thing lost was the ability for all workers, not just bosses, to get a sense of the bigger picture. If you're just on the team, you're kind of doing your own work. And you don't get to look over your shoulder at the other group doing the other work. So not everyone on the team shares the whole vision of what the game is. The team has remained remote, though Azuka seems pleased with how the project has come together. So there's some good things here, but also some questionable things. First things first, it looks like the development team weren't too affected by the situation. In some ways, it actually looks like it benefited them in the long run. The wording here has stated that it actually accelerated their work, so at least we know that they're not being too negatively affected by that whole situation from the past. But there's one thing they said in here that I don't really understand. It's right here where Izuka says that the Sonic franchise was kind of hitting a wall with the old format. Maybe that's just PR talk, but like, like, sure, open world is a good gimmick to sell your game on, but then again, Sonic was not hitting a wall with its old format. We wanted another boosting game after Sonic Generations, and there was a lot of people who wanted a return to the adventure formula. Those gameplay styles were not dead, we wanted you to expand on them, but you never did. And when you did expand on those styles, they weren't that good, like in examples of Sonic Forces. With games like Sonic Forces and Sonic 06, that was not the community telling you that we don't want boosting games or we don't want adventure games. We quite frankly just don't want bad games. Now, thankfully, they're still bringing back the boosting formula from previous Sonic games, but it's more of the implications that this statement had. We have not hit a wall with the old formulas yet. Like, we have yet to see a modern-day Sonic game utilizing the adventure formula. I think Sonic Adventure 1 is one of the best controlling games I have ever played, and I would love to see that adventure formula translated to modern day graphics and technology. No, the adventure formula has not hit a wall we haven't even touched yet, my guy. But who knows, maybe that's your next thought. You like talking about Sonic Adventure 3, maybe give us Sonic Adventure 3, you know what I'm saying? Alright, one more thing before we end off the video. I know I said I was about to end it off, but I have to mention this one last thing because it just got to me right now. Kishimoto, the game director of Sonic Frontiers, has come out with what we can expect for the general length of Sonic Frontiers. It says right here, With the implementation of Open Zone, Sonic Frontiers boasts a lot more content than previous Sonic games. Kishimoto says I should take an average player between 20 and 30 hours to finish the game, while completionists can easily spend double the time to see everything. To keep the player motivated throughout the journey, Kishimoto and his team decide to implement character progression to accompany the longer playtime. 20 
to 30 hours of gameplay. That is actually insane. This is going to be the longest Sonic game ever created. At face value, 20 to 30 hours sounds really good. That sounds like a lot of content to play with, but I am a little bit skeptical about this because 20 to 30 hours sounds like a lot of time. Now, I'm a fan of games that have a lot of content due to the massive scope that it has. I don't really like it when games artificially stretch out the game length just so they can tell you that they made a 30 to 60 hour video game. Now, I'm not saying that's what's happening here with Sonic Frontiers. All 20 or 30 of those hours could be well spent, but at the same time, I'm saying be a little bit skeptical. We do not know what these 20 to 30 hours may contain, so we're gonna have to wait to see what they contain. Because for all we know, Sonic Frontiers could be like a 10 hour game, and then the rest of the time is just you collecting things. I really don't want that to be the case, but it's entirely possible. But I am going to say this now, if Sonic Frontiers is a 20 to 30 hour game, full of content that is worthwhile playing and isn't just filler with collectibles or whatever, that is going to be really good for Sonic. If this is the case and you can call me crazy, this might just be one of the best open world games ever made. And I am surprised that I am saying that for a Sonic game, guys. Sonic Frontiers has a lot to live up to, especially if they are saying this game is going to be 20 to 30 hours of gameplay. So Sonic Team, do your best out there. I believe in you. You can make this game revolutionary. Anyways, with that said, if you guys liked the video, make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe with post notifications on if you want to be notified of my future Sonic content. Anyways, I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Welcome to the new outro. Adios. Okay, so this outro has to be less than 20 seconds. Let's go. Boys go Orion Pax, Nyx, Ethan K78, Johnny on Rings, Epic Gaming with George, Sonic Man 715, Storm, ArchXYZ, Sonic Up, Thomas One Ride, Chip Chip Chop, Escape, Sonic Pip, The Squeaker Nerd, Super Jacks, Boom, Sonic Extreme, Super Saiyan Sonic. Thank you guys so much for this one. Chill. Click one of the videos down below. I hope I made my time.